this has been gr- really great so far. We're going to transition now into a, a segment we call start, sub, or sit. So we're going to give you three basketball topics, ask you to start one, sub one, and then and then sit one. So And we'll have a little discussion from there. So, Coach, if you're ready, we'll dive in. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Well, you did mention paint touches a few minutes ago, and we're going to revisit that in this first start sub sit. So uh, this is, in your opinion, the best type of paint touch you could get. So start sub or sit these three different ways the ball can kind of get into the middle of the floor. A paint touch off of a drive, a downhill drive into the paint, off of a post catch, or an offensive rebound. Start sub or sit. I'm going to start with the, with the dribble drive. Okay. And uh, sub with the uh, offensive rebound, and I'll sit the uh, the post touch. Okay. I wasn't sure where you're going to go with uh, the one that really interests me was your thoughts on offensive rebounding and sort of going back, I guess, to establishing identity and attacking and rim pressure. How do you build offensive rebounding into sort of like another part of your half court offense? Yeah, we've, we've, and we've had great offensive rebounding numbers over the years. Um, we do zero off, we do zero rebounding drills. And I tell, we don't work on free throws and we don't work on rebounds. And okay. we, but we built it as part of our culture. Um, and we just chart it. So we'll teach guys, okay, here's a few methods. So it's not truly really true, but we'll teach guys, hey, here's some ways, here's where you're getting to. Your job is to get to the front of the rim, your job is to get to the weak side. You know, ball shot from here, it's going over here. Just do it every single time. And we chart it. And we just chart it. We just, you know, instead of saying, okay, let's run a whole bunch of drills and beat the heck out of each other, let's just chart it. And if you don't do it, you know, you're going to get got. So (laughs) we just do it that way. But so we've become fanatical about it. And every possession, there's at least one coach saying, you didn't go. You're supposed to go. You didn't go. Or you didn't get back. And transition defense is tied to it. Um and, and so we're just fanatical about it um, on every single play. And guys get tired of hearing it until they just start going. And then they they ultimately all break and just start doing their job and going sure. and become the bloodbath. And then you become a really good defensive rebounding team because if you don't block out Mays and Fawcett, he's going to get every single offensive rebound. Yep. And it carries over the game. So, yeah. No, so that, that's that's been numerically okay. a big advantage for us. <laughs> do you limit how many guys you want going to the offensive glass? So if you had four good offensive rebounders, would you say all four go? Would you be on them? Like, Hey, you didn't go, you know, all four of you go. Yep. You have a job. So I just try to make our get backs and our rebounding very specific. We have, I think maybe one, maybe two guys in the roster that might do one of, you know, that have the ability to, Hey, crash but it, you know if we need to get an extra guy back you can recognize it the rest of the guys you have one job you're always a crash guy no matter what you're always a uh, get back guy no matter what a lot of times we're only crashing two because you know we're fanatic we think we can get there with two and we, we also think that in number two it's also a little deceiving because we have such hard drivers on the perimeter yeah. that john knight or tevian jones is going to be around the rim a lot so it really turns into three even though those are get back guys, but if they're finishing in the paint, they're in the paint. And so we really say three back, but we also have, you know, we have a young man in practice. That's a, a wing that just is fanatical about uh, offense rebounding. So it's like, okay, he's the exception to the rule. If he's on the floor, he's going. And cause he's earned that right. And we'd be stupid not to, you know, it's kind of like when we were at UNLV, we had Derek Jones and we were trying, we were a three back team. But you tell Derek Jones when he's playing the three to get back, that takes the spirit of who he is away from him because he was fanatic. He was fantastic at, at, at finding that ball. So you, to me, I just started doing it by player instead of by position. You're the, you're, you three guys are ball stoppers. You three guys are, are deep in the hole. Your job is only the offensive rebound. You're always an offensive rebound. Now there's no debate about it. So we kind of changed it to individualized. Yeah. But your, your offensive rebounding offense um so you know unless it's a put back dunk or an easy you know offense review and, and finish what's the offensive flow after someone say gets an offensive board and you want the ball either reversed or then it's a short shot clock you can't like reset to a full shot clock what are the concepts you play through after an offensive rebound 
you know, I, we tell them if you get an offense rebound, you can do whatever you want with it. You know, most of the guys aren't are silly. They're not trying to go in there and get the shot blocked. But a lot of times what you'll see, if they go dig a ball out in the paint and they go back up with it, a lot of times the defense is in position and they end up drawing a foul. You know, but they're, we're also unselfish enough where guys are back on the arc. You know, a lot of times we don't get that kick out three necessarily a lot. We'll occasionally will. But a lot of times the offensive rebounds come. We're so fanatical about transition defense that all those guards are already back. So, but I would rather, I'll make the trade off. If you get an offensive rebound, you get to be selfish. You can do whatever you want. You earn that ball. So if you want to go fire it back up there, have at it. And, okay. And uh, so it's just, that's their perk. Sure. Yeah, that's, they, they, uh, they got it. You get to use it. So, <laughs> Coach, my, really fast before we move on to the next one. Um, you know, you started a dribble paint touch, getting to the point off a dribble and you sat getting to the paint off of a post catch. I'm just maybe wondering why there was a difference in your mind between those two so much. Well, namely, um, for the post catch, I, I feel like the defense is kind of set. I feel like on a dribble drive, you might get someone to help out of a corner. Mm-hmm. You might get that big to lean over and worry about, okay, I see his numbers. I got to help a little bit. You're creating some rotations. Whereas on the post touch, yeah, you might get some shrinkage and, but the next action is going to cause the reaction, you know, yes. our 45 yeah. cuts and the splits. So it's just different. We get a ton of post ups based on our dribble drive. We do everything off two. We've eliminated mid-range jumpers we other than late clock we've eliminated one leg finishes in the paint in traffic we've just we've kind of mm-hmm. streamlined we really going back to the uh michigan factory roots you know henry ford <laughs> built a, a better way a, a better a better way to work on you know specialization that's kind of what we've tried to do is just let's just specialize in certain things that are us and not worry about working on the rest now we will post we post our guards a lot you know, we, we, we have a big now that we, we love that we'll post a lot. We have a six, two kid that is unstoppable on the post right now. And we're just got to figure out a way to use them. Um, so we'll do some stuff on the post. I don't, I don't, I'm not on the team of hating post-ups. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah put that way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we only gave you those options and you had to, yeah. you were yeah. kind of nice yeah, enough to play go. our game. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, hey, sorry. You keep dropping great stuff. So I got to follow up. Why two leg finishes over one leg finishes? To me, you you have, you you have no options on the on one leg, and 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 I just believe in the bigger level game, especially in traffic. Our deal is this: if you have a shoulder and hip advantage on your defender, and there's no help, have at it with the one leg finish. Does that happen very often? Not really. Um, so on the half court, it's always going to be in traffic. So I want to get on two. That gives you an opportunity to get fouled the opportunity to have more options to pivot, you know, to dump off. Um, you can change your mind off two. Once you go off of one, there ain't no change in your mind. It's going up. Off two puts you in better position for rebounding, puts you in better position for transition defense. One leg finishes, you see that guy end up in the first row or on his butt or up against the pad all the time and all of a sudden it's five on four the other way. Um, but I just, we just love that. I just think the toughness of going off two in traffic, it's it sure. just, collapses a defense Absolutely. and with two foot finishes what do you feel you're you find yourself teaching more the the floater the pivots the pump fakes uh one guy yeah everything we yeah. have a whole series and you know 12 to 20 finishes you know we'll go we'll come from the wing we'll we'll you know hop middle we'll hop baseline we'll pivot middle pivot baseline pivot 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 you know the chop fake you know ball fake we'll, we'll work on it all we'll Two, I, I like floaters. You know, a lot of people are, are anti-floater. I like floaters, not only like the one leg floater, but you know, off two, mm-hmm. um, where it turns into kind of like a leaning jumper. As long as your body weight's going to the rim, I like it, and we'll work on that from 15 feet in. Guys like Nigel Williams, Goss, and some of these guys just perfected that shot. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it puts a lot of pressure on a defense in that high paint. You know, so we've we've kind of just said, here's who we are, who's who, we, who we're not, and it's been efficient for us. All right, coach. Uh, our next start sub sit for you is dealing with the ice uh, coverage. And so the three things I guess for start sub sit are um, 
what your points of emphasis or what is going to concern you more that you do right. So being physical with the ball or maintaining contact, the angle of the feet on the ice or the depth of the big and the drop coverage or the ice coverage. Yeah. So we, you know, we down everything on the sides. So, you know, we go against it every day in practice, you know, for us offensively, we want to, you know, as soon as that guard gets on your high side, we want to keep that guy up there. You know, we want to kind of put him in jail. Now you're, you're out of the play, you know, let's turn this into a five on four. Uh, But we also want to attack that big, you know, I think it's a little bit, you know, we don't want to get pinned on that sideline and we just work on making sure that we're off that sideline. And if you can get these ball screens just high enough, we think we can drive that big down to that baseline turn corner, you know, or we think we can drive that big, keep that guy, you know, the guard on our hip, you know, get middle, or we drive in baseline to pull two guys almost to the corner of the floor, throw back. And, and, and then we're, we're going ahead and playing four on three as quick as we can get it to the other side of the floor. So we have a few things that those are kind of our points of emphasis against it, but you know, we go against it so much that, that we, we feel good about it when we see it, we, you know, cause we have a whole bunch of stuff we can throw back. We pop that big throw back right in back into a dribble handoff is impossible to guard, you know, getting it to the other side is a big point of emphasis though. We just want to let's get it over there and let's take advantage of the four on three that we have on the other side of the floor and see what happens. So, you know, th- th- that's been successful for us. For sure. And coach, I think with this, we are thinking on the defensive side of the ball, yep. like what's, you know, when you're teaching the drop or the ice coverage, yep. what do you emphasize most? Is it the contact with the ball? Yeah. Handler? Yep. It is, it is a contact. You, we have to be right on that hip. The guy's got to sit on that high leg and not, he can't get over the top. It's just a non-negotiable, you know, and that, that has put the trust now in the big, it's all kind of tied together. But that big has to be low and wide, seven feet wide up to that screen and, and funnel them down to that short corner at the very, at the very worst. And, um, but having that guard contact, if that guard has space, it's going to be too easy. It's going to be too easy to throw back. It's going to be too easy to get that pocket pass or split. So number one, it has to be that contact. Number two, that big has to be low and wide. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll trap a lot of it. We, we, a lot of times, like we get them there on that sideline. There'll be certain teams that we see playing on that sideline. We're just, we're going to ice it and trap it. You know, just pin them right up against the sideline sure. and, and treat it as a full trap. That's been a, That's been successful for us as well. Coach, what is kind of the responsibility you're teaching with the guard? Is it just take away him going middle? And when the guard maybe then starts to attack towards the baseline, what do you want the defending guard to do? Yeah, he he has to keep it down. He has to keep him in it until that big leaves. So if that screener kind of pauses and waits, you know, he's got to keep that guard down until that big departs. The offensive big departs and then he's got to get back in front and get that let our big recover and go home you know, you know which is a little bit of an art to it but we try yeah. to use that trigger of if that screener is still still there or he's slow getting out of the screen you have to stay on top of it you have to stay there and and we're teaching you know tight on that top leg but we want high hands because we don't want that simple hook pass back to a, a popping big, you know, and then we're pulling that weak side. We're, we're saying, Hey, if we got you on the sideline, we're going to bring that weak side way over. We don't think they can make that skip pass again out, out of that, you know, that ice. So we'll bring all that. We'll load the whole defense on that side of the floor and almost treat it like a little bit of a trap. I seen on the side, you're like, we're talking about being able to maybe trap or keep it on a side. How about in the middle third of the floor, a middle ball screen? Do the same concepts apply for you? We do. We're unique. We try to we try to uh, force everything that we can. So we'll okay. left everything in the middle. I'm a big one way, you know. But yeah. then we we'll do stuff scout specific. Um, but we'll we'll send a lot of stuff left there, and, and you always know where the tag's coming from. And you and but we'll also try. We we'll, uh, probably we we trapped a lot. You know, we will trap a lot. We'll send it left and trap it um, mm-hmm. with our big. And we'll send that big before the screen even gets there sometime. We'll, we'll we'll change it up. Sometimes they'll be at the point of the screen, then trap. Sometimes it's like as soon as that big goes, just leave them and just let's go get them and force them to the half court. Um, we're trying to dictate the terms. Okay. You know, that's our whole deal. Let's just dictate the terms. 
make them make an adjustment and then we'll make our adjustment from there from there and play that game but instead of just kind of reading what the offense does we'd rather just kind of do it our way and be aggressive with it sure when you say you always know that where the tag's coming from is that meaning it because it's going to come from behind or because it's always going to come from the two side without divulging, I guess, too much. But what do you mean by you always know when it goes that way? Yeah. Like if we're going to go from behind, for example, as one of our coverages, then it's, it's simple. It's just okay. easier when you know where the roller is going, I guess. So you yes. can change, we, we can change our tag up all over the place, but if we know we're sending that guy left. We at least know where the roller is going. So coach, we got one more for you here. Um, so the next start, sub or sit, and I know you've played one season with it, but a lot of the rest of the country now, is, at least at the college game, is going to be playing uh, with the international line. So with the three-point line, move back another foot, foot and a half from where it was two years ago. So start, sub, or sit with the line moving back, things that maybe you would be most concerned about um, when you're thinking about the line being at a greater distance. So your shooters, you know, working on them, being able to continue to shoot a higher percentage or a good percentage from three defensive lane coverages. So whether or not you need to p- apply more coverage out to the three point line or be more in gaps or how you handle closeouts to the three point line, shorter distances or keep it all the same. So start sub sit new three point line thoughts. Uh, I would start closeouts. I would, uh, um, sub the, uh, lanes and sitting the the shooters big the biggest thing for us you know is just the closeouts I, I i like the new line you know i wish i would even go to a universal deal i love to just get everybody on the same page across all basketball you know, whether it's quarters or whatever rules you know sure. skills. but i like it for spacing purposes offensively you know and you know we we we're okay with our shooters getting out there our, our, our quality shooters shoot 23 24 feet that's fine if they can make it um because i think it stretches the defense but so the shooters i'm not not, not so as worried about you know that's just reps and and um you know really you find if you recruit shooters it's amazing they make shots <laughs> right <Yeah>. so <laughs> so you can you can figure out ways to remedy that um but the closeouts you know are a concern because you know the the big sky particularly is a, a fantastic shooting league year in year out um you know so a huge emphasis of our defense is to not give up threes to you know what we deem a sniper and uh so those closeouts just become a little bit longer and we got to be a little bit more disciplined making sure we get high hands uh otherwise we you get you get spread out a little bit that, that, that's probably our big priority because we, we we try to really limit threes as one of our non-negotiables defensively. Yeah. With the three-point line move back, and I know you played with it for a year, did you notice any differences in like being able to apply ball pressure you want because, you know, harder to kind of keep guys out of gaps if, if it was, if you are sort of in denial one pass away? Yeah, you, 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 I thought it had a way, I didn't think it would have a huge impact. Yeah big deal i thought that you know extra foot would be whatever you know yeah. what i mean uh I, I was wrong um you <laughs> i think you saw a lot a lot of guys can't move back a foot and make that shot anymore at a high rate you know to right. me if you're, if you're not shooting 35 you're not a great shooter from there you know it's just what it is but i, I think that you saw a little bit a little bit of that i thought you saw uh i think it's harder to play non-shooters I think that's what we found. We said there's we'll never put more than two non-shooters on the floor ever again, hopefully in my career. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you, know you just you said because you can't, because the shooters just give they make your drivers that much more effective. You know, they really turn a guy that maybe is a seven out of ten effectiveness on offense into a 10 out of 10 by just being hugged in the corner. Um, you know, so those guys make everything better. You know, and so I think that's become even more important to have those shooters because it creates more spacing for your drivers. Coach, my follow up is just with the closeout quickly. I think there's a lot of just debate or talk about how to teach them. And I know you mentioned kind of the high hand. So what what other rules or not enough rules is the right word, but what are you telling your guys on closeouts and making closeouts? You know, we've we've um I think shooters have gotten so good that the that the NBA flybys you know they kind of become in vogue the run guys off the line 
we've gone completely away from it. And mm-hmm. we were teaching that a lot. Now I, I just shooters can sidestep now and, and they, they work on that shot to a degree where it's the game has become, it's adjusted to the adjustment. Uh, <laughs> so to me that that's not effective anymore. So we're back to the two hands high takeaway vision close out to the five head, which is right above the forehead. We're really just, so let's just take away vision and just keep them in front and, and, and be ready to sit. But we're not trying to run guys off. We're not trying to do all that. You know, we're our, our defensive position. We're a gap team. We should be there anyway. And if they just okay. make a bunch of shots, you know, some guys can shoot over length. Yeah. Hopefully we're long enough, you know, through our recruiting and, and, and our athleticism that it's still difficult enough that we can just be, second man off the floor and, and, uh, still get, take away that vision. Coach, you're, uh, you're off the start, sub, sit, hot seat. Thanks for going through those scenarios. That was a lot of fun. 